Your rainwater tank not only saves water, it also helps to reduce the amount of excess stormwater running off your roof. In urban areas, excess stormwater can be a real problem. Stormwater runoff picks up pollutants as it travels through built-up areas and contributes to flash flooding, erosion damage and pollution in local creeks. Tanks can divert some of this excess water for a useful purpose. To keep your tank system in good condition, some easy maintenance is needed from time to time. This video will walk you through the simple steps needed to maintain your roof and gutters, where your rainwater is collected for tank use. The first flush device, which diverts the first part of the rainwater from the roof, which is most likely to be dirty. The inlet to the actual tank and outlet to the stormwater. The pump, which pressurises your water for use, and controllers, which you may have, to switch your water to mains use. Remember, rainwater tanks are low maintenance, not no maintenance. Hi, my name's Shane. Today we're going to be talking about rainwater tank maintenance at two different locations. It's important to know that not everyone's rainwater tank setup is the same, but we'll show you the two most common setups. First, we're going to talk about roof and gutter maintenance. Remember, the cleaner your roof and gutter, the cleaner the water in your tank. There are many different types of gutter guard systems to make this maintenance job easier. This is a clip-in style gutter guard. It's important to remember with this one that the leaves and debris can get caught on this lip. They sit there, they decompose and break down and eventually sift through the gutter guard. These need regular cleaning. To do this, we remove the section, clean it by hosing out, clean the gutters out and put it back in. Let's go and have a look at a different type of gutter guard. This style of gutter guard is a fixed screen gutter guard. The advantage of this is there is nowhere for the leaves to sit, they simply brush off. Fine particles and dust still may get through and from time to time may need cleaning out by hosing. Now remember, whilst cleaning your gutters out, follow a safe work practice. If you're not confident, employ a skilled contractor to do so for you. By regularly cleaning out your gutters, they are less likely to clog up and less prone to nuisance overflows during downpours. If you have a lot of trees around, you may need to clean your gutters every couple of months. You can save yourself some time and effort by ensuring overhanging vegetation is trimmed back. Remember, working at heights can be hazardous. Always follow safe work procedures. See www.workcover.nsw.gov.au or use the services of a trained and licensed contractor to do this for you. This is a first flush device. I also have one in my hand for demonstration. First flush devices are a very important part of your rainwater tank system. If you don't have one installed, you may wish to do so. They come in a lot of different shapes and sizes, but they all work on the same theory. The first part of the water that runs off your roof, which is generally dirty, flows into the chamber. It fills, the ball floats, then the water is diverted into your tank. You may have a first flush fitted to every downpipe or one on the inlet to your tank. Now it's important that your first flush system drains out after every rain event. It does this by a small hole in the bottom of the first flush chamber. Now it's important not to block this hole off. If the water coming out of this first flush becomes a nuisance, by simply putting a small piece of garden irrigation hose onto the bottom, it can be taken away so it's not a nuisance and away from footings and foundations. A well-designed first flush system is quick and easy to maintain, but quite often overlooked. I know I would rather clean out a first flush device than get my whole tank cleaned. Let's have a look at how to clean one. This is one of the most important parts of your rainwater tank system to maintain. Debris builds up quite quickly in this little chamber. I would recommend that every two months this be cleaned, depending on how clean your roof and gutter is and rainfall events. 
I'm going to put my safety gear on and we'll show you how to clean one out. To clean the first flush, it's a simple matter of removing the irrigation hose. Now we remove the small black fitting first. This reduces the amount of water that gushes out instantly. Unscrew. And remove the filter. Once the water's finished draining out of the first flush chamber, the bigger cap is then removed. And inside we can see the debris that the first flush chamber caught that would have ended up in your tank. Now it's a matter of cleaning out all these parts. We wash these parts out in water clean the filter, clean out. On the inside of this black fitting, we have the rubber, which has the hole in it, which allows the water to drain out of the first flush system after every rain event. It's important this is cleared so that the first flush chamber works efficiently. On that rubber, on one side is written top. When put back together, we need to be able to read the top writing to ensure that it's up the right way. It's now a matter of putting it back together and waiting for rain. Insert the ball first, then the larger cap. filter and then our black fitting at the bottom. Irrigation hose and that's one first flush cleaned. Leaf feeders are another great device that can be put in your stormwater system. The idea of a leaf feeder is that the larger debris is brushed away from your stormwater system and your first flush system, which means your first flush needs less maintenance. To clean your leaf eater, simply scrape the leaves off the top, or the screen can be removed, the leaves taken off, may need washing out, and then simply reinstall. Some leaf eaters have a second screen in them. I have a demo to show you how to clean one of them. This one has a coarse screen on the top to shed the bulk away. It then has a fine mesh underneath. Clean them out. Then simply put back together. Clean leaf eater. Not all environments are the same, so depending on your location, you may need to clean your first flush device more or less frequently, depending on your surroundings. However, we do suggest at least every couple of months as average. Screens on your tank are a common sense way to ensure that vermin and mosquitoes don't enter your rainwater tank. If you have a tank in New South Wales, the New South Wales State Government requires screens on all tanks to ensure there is no breeding of mosquitoes. To do this, we simply remove the screws that hold the screen in, then we remove it, cleaning out any debris that's in it. These screens may need to be hosed or scrubbed depending on what's in them and how dirty they are. At this point we need to ensure that there are no rips and tears in the screen anywhere. It's all in good condition that would let any vermin in. We then reinstall the screen 
put all the screws back in and make sure it's fastened tightly. If the screen here is not cleaned regularly, the water out of the stormwater pipe overflows, causing a nuisance for not only you, but your neighbours as well. Remember, when cleaning these screens, you're working at heights, so make sure you follow the safe work practices of working at heights. Some tanks have a filter bag like this installed underneath the inlet strainer. If you have a filter bag, it requires extra maintenance. If this bag is blocked with fine debris or algae, the water that flows into your tank can't escape out through the bag quick enough and your tank will overflow out through the inlet strainer. So we need to make sure that we wash this bag regularly to keep it maintained. Screens on your outlet of your tank are just as important as the screens on the inlet. The outlet of your rainwater tank allows the water to flow out of your tank once your tank's full into the stormwater system. If you have a fixed style screen on the outlet to your rainwater tank in the pit, you need to ensure that the screen is not blocked with debris to allow the water to flow through clearly. If you have a flap style screen, we need to make sure that the screen doesn't jam open, allowing vermin to enter the tank. We also need to ensure that there's no rips and tears in the screen to allow vermin in. We show another demonstration of this at our next location. Here we are at another location. What you see here is most common of a new home construction. It's important to note though, we have the same features as what we did before. We have the inlet to the tank, we have the inlet strainer, we have your first flush device, we have the outlet, and the outlet valve. And that's pretty much inlet and outlet screen maintenance. Always follow safe work practices or engage with the services of a trained and licensed contractor if you have any concerns. And this is very important, to not get in the tank yourself. Now we're going to talk about pumps and controllers. The sole purpose of our pump is to pressurise the water that we have stored in our rainwater tank for use in our home and garden. It's important that we leave the power turned onto our pump at all times. The pump turns itself on and off as required when the water is used. It's also a good idea to check that your pump is working correctly simply by turning a tap or an appliance on that is connected to your rainwater and check that your pump cuts in. The pump is cut in as we can hear. The pump should continue to run until it builds up enough pressure in the line and then turns itself off. This is an external pump. We'll now go to our other location to have a look at a submersible. We've just looked at external pumps. In this installation, they've used an, a submersible pump. The submersible pump sits inside the tank and the water is pumped from here through the pipework system across to the controller. The controller decides whether it uses town mains water or water from the tank depending on the water level in the tank. If you have a filter like this on the inlet to your controller, it needs to be maintained. To do this, we simply turn the mains water off, we turn the power off to the pump. By undoing this screw at the back, we release the pressure and the excess water out of the line, undo the housing, and remove the filter. This filter is cleaned by hosing out then put back together like so. Doesn't need to be over tightened, nice and firm. That's done. You may also have a filter on the outlet side of the controller. This is the same procedure. The power needs to be turned off to the pump the water off at the mains, 
Some come with a, bracket, a wrench like this to undo the filter. The filters in these housings are a cartridge. These are discarded. New ones are bought from hardwares or plumbing supplies. Reinstated back. And reinstalled. And that's how you clean the filters on your controller. Now we're just going to have a look at top-ups for tanks. If you don't have a controller, you may have a top-up. A top-up works very similar to a toilet inlet valve. We have mains pressure into the valve. This float is adjusted to suit the depth of your tank. As the water level drops, it pulls the arm on the inlet valve down, allowing water to flow into the tank. This ensures we always have water for the toilet and washing machine. We need to make sure that this arm can move freely at all times to ensure that it works effectively. Another great idea are rainwater level gauges. These move up and down with the water in your tank showing you how much water you have. This is a great way to tell whether your pump's working correctly or not. So that's a basic overview of rainwater tank maintenance. I hope this helps you in the future to keep your rainwater tank maintained as best as it can be. Remember, do not tamper with pump controllers and tank top-up systems. They have the potential to contaminate the mains water supply. Contact a licensed plumber if you suspect a problem with these systems. For further information regarding rainwater tanks and their maintenance, please contact your local Enviro plumber or use the services of a trained and licensed contractor to do this for you.